What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, we are working on this awesome piece right here. It is a record cabinet and a radio. And my client wanted me to make it over into a bar cabinet for him. So we are going to do that. And his theme for this awesome piece is atomic. So think Jetsons, but pulled into modern day. And we're going to see if we can achieve that. I have never ever worked on anything like this before so it's gonna be interesting to say the least but anyways let's get started the first thing I'm gonna do is work on taking out all of this stuff right here as I said earlier this is my first time working on something like this so it was a lot of trial and error like putting a tool in these holes that absolutely do nothing but eventually I got the hint and started working on these washers on the side here so I could remove the speaker Now, before you guys get mad at me for removing all the wires and clipping and cutting and all that jazz, I just want to let you guys know that I did plug it in beforehand and tried to work the radio and it did not work. It did not even light up in the slightest. So I am good to go to cause some, you know, havoc if you will. Also, I just want to add that clipping these wires was an integral part of this process because before I moved the entire radio, I had to clip all of those so that when I did remove it, it wouldn't just come off and still be attached by all of those wires. I wanted to salvage as much of the face of the radio that I possibly could, including this glass piece right here, so I went ahead and got started on removing it from the rest of the piece. Now that we're done with the interior of the piece, it's time to get started on the exterior. I'm removing all of these little brass decals just so I can clean it properly. And once we're all done with that, it's time to get started with stripping. No, not that, you filthy animals. This stripper is my favorite stripper in the entire world. It works amazingly well. Unfortunately, it didn't on this piece and I'll tell you why in a second. But this stuff is so gentle that I'm using just my hand with my glove to wipe it onto the piece and I had no issue with it eating through my glove. 
After applying a thick coat, I made sure to cover it up with plastic bags that I have been reusing for years. And all, honestly, all you have to do is wash off the paint stripper and it comes off totally fine, the bags intact, so you can keep reusing these bags basically until they fall apart. It's awesome. Smart Strip works really, really fast. However, I did know that I was working with a pretty thick top coat, so I started off with 12 hours to let it just sit and marinate a little bit. Now let's talk about this top coat here. Unfortunately, I tried two versions of Smart Strip. One was the simple one where it's just, you know, your average Smart Strip that you use for paint, and the other was a little bit more heavy duty. So I tried it twice and still nothing. And so I did some research and I found out that similar pieces like this from this era were actually finished the same way that guitars are, with either a polyester finish or a thick lacquer finish. The sides of the piece however were not finished in the same material so the top coat came off super easy with the paint stripper. One thing that I also really love about Smart Strip is that you don't need a chemical to clean it. You actually just need a wet rag. Yeah, like just water. <laughs> But anyways, after finding the results of my research, I decided to look up how to repair a guitar finish and decided to approach this piece in the same way that a guitar maker would. So after I removed the stripper, it left all these pock marks in the finish. So I decided to get to sanding. I was super nervous to get started on sanding simply because the finish on it was so unbelievably thick. So I had to start with a pretty high grit, which was 60, and I knew the veneer underneath wasn't gonna be the thickest thing, but fortunately I was able to get all of the finish off and get down to the beautiful veneer underneath. I personally don't like sanding bare wood with anything less than 120 grit. So I moved from 60 to 80, and then once it got down to the the wood, I moved to 120, and then when I was working on the veneer, I decided to move all the way up to 400 grit. For the top coat here, I knew I wasn't going to be able to get in the corners very well to remove all of the top coat, so I decided to just buff it out a little bit. It didn't have very much damage on it luckily, so buffing it out worked actually really well, and I did this with 400 grit starting and then moved all the way up to 1000 grit. After sanding, I went in with a damp cloth to make sure that all of the dust was off of the piece before I went in with a finishing coat. Usually after going over a piece with a wet cloth, you would have to sand again, but since I finished at such a high grit sandpaper, it didn't raise the grain at all. But if you are finishing with a 120 or a 200 grit sandpaper, then you might wanna use tack cloth instead so that way it doesn't raise the grain and you won't have to sand again. For the finish, I am applying a wipe on poly in high gloss with a paper towel, and I don't recommend doing this. If you have a sponge brush or an old t-shirt, I would recommend doing that over this any day. But if you find yourself in a similar situation and only have paper towels on hand, it is very easy to get a nice finish with the paper towels. No matter what you're applying this with, honestly, I think the secret to getting a smooth finish with a wipe on poly is just to think of it as a wax or an oil. You want to start with very little and just work it into the wood grain and just take it really slow, not being afraid to do five, six, or even seven coats to get your final finish. Between each coat, I make sure to go in with a 400 grit sandpaper to make sure that it gets an extra smooth finish. And while that dried, I went ahead and got started on cleaning the face of the radio. For this, I just used water and a little bit of dish soap to get it really nice and clean.
Unfortunately, some of the brass was damaged, so I had to go in with some gold spray. That way, all of the gold would match. For the interior, my client wanted this to be the storage unit of the bar for things like alcohol bottles and glasses and all that, so I went ahead and created a base for it using some scrap pieces of wood. Unfortunately, my miter saw couldn't cut the length of the board, so I had to go in and very painstakingly cut along the piece with my jigsaw, which took a very long time fit perfectly and to fasten it in I just cut little pieces of trim and then nailed them into the side so that it would hold the base in place. I got these legs off of Amazon and they are so adorable and they fit the style that I'm going for so perfectly well so I went ahead and sanded them down so that I could stain them to match the rest of the piece. After my last coat of polyurethane, I went in with my 400 grit sandpaper for a final scuff sand and then I decided to go in with some car polish. I had seen one guy use it for guitars and I thought if he can use it for guitars, why not on furniture? And honestly, it worked really well.
phone died while filming this step of the process. However, I did make this repair very well and seamless and it matches perfect. So yeah, don't, don't judge the early stages. As I mentioned, my client was looking for something more atomic themed, so I pulled inspiration from these photos here for the outside design. By the way, if you ever work with liquid gold, try this. It is so cool and the pen, I, yeah, I just like working with pens and, and stuff and it's, it's awesome. It's, it's great. I, I recommend. Thank you. 
For the two side filter things, I went ahead and traced out the layout of the speaker that held it into place before. That way I could replicate the design and just hold it into place without having all the bulky technology on the inside. Getting all the buttons to stay in place on the face of the radio was extremely tricky and I had to get really creative with how I did that. So I used a lot of the same material to hold it into place and then recycled the screws from the original radio and then used my nail gun to secure it into place. For holding the glass in place, I used these little glass frame twisty guys and I used a lot of them. I think I used about 15 of them just to make sure that the glass was secure and wasn't going to fall out anytime soon. Before I go ahead and show you guys the finished product, I just wanted to give you guys a reminder of what it looked like before and give a huge thank you to my current membership supporters. You guys are amazing and help make my videos possible. If you guys want to help support Miss Flips, make sure to click the join button below to read more about the membership program. But anyways, thank you so much for watching you guys and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Until next time, stay flippin'.